The year is 1997 and a friend of mine just got his first computer, a Gateway 2000 PC running Windows 95. He had games like Police Quest SWAT and the Need for Speed SE to keep him occupied, but his mom really enjoyed arcade games like Miss Pac-Man and Centipede. She asked me if I knew of any, and after a quick search on AOL's Games channel, I had my answer. Champ Games, programmed by John W. Champeau and released as shareware under his Champ Programming Company. Or maybe it's Champ Programming, I don't know. I always said it Champ since that's how it looks in the games, so whatever. Anyway, back to my story, which is that in the mid-90s, arcade games were making a comeback in the home computer market, with packs like Microsoft's Arcade being quite popular. But if you didn't want to pay for such a compilation, since you just blew two grand on a shiny new gateway, independent developers were your best friends. Now keep in mind, arcade emulation was in its infancy at this time, and most people didn't have any idea that such a thing was possible anyway, so you had all sorts of programmers recreating arcade games for home computers and hoping to make a quick buck. John Champeau was one such individual, and if you were into shareware at the time, chances are you recall at least one of his translations, as they were arguably the best shareware arcade games around. He actually got started making games back in the 80s on the Atari 800 in BASIC, and then in the 90s using C and Assembly on the PC. And when you're learning a new language, it's incredibly common to try and duplicate an existing game, so John looked to Missile Command and Centipede for inspiration. He ended up with two EGA versions of them, and although he never released them, they laid the foundation for what he made in 1993, which was a game he called Pac-Maniac. This was a simple clone of Pac-Man, although it was more inspired by the Atari 800 version rather than the arcade original. But it had VGA graphics and PC speaker sound effects, and even had support for mouse controls, which is both unique and disturbingly awful for a game of this type. He quickly followed this up with two more games that year, Champ Asteroids and Champ Centipede. Again, these were pretty simple interpretations, but they were less than 100 kilobytes to download and ran on just about anything, so people asked for more, and he continued working on other clones over the next few years. But it wasn't until 1996 that Champ Programming really made a name for itself, and that was with Champ Kong. Not only was this a clone of the always popular Donkey Kong from Nintendo, but it featured a whole slew of new features that set it apart from anything else. With the help of some friends and relatives, Champ Kong featured spot-on gameplay, graphics and sound that very closely mimicked that of the arcade cabinet, and even something called Champ Mode. This was an entirely new set of levels, power-ups, enemies, rules, and gameplay for the game, which made it feel less like a clone and more like a fresh interpretation. Of course you had to pay extra for all the best bits, but even the shareware version was far ahead of just about everyone else, especially for DOS. This combination of features proved so popular that Champ Programming became a powerhouse of arcade game translations for DOS PCs, with 20 games planned for release throughout the 90s. They even sold an adapter that let you use an Atari joystick on your PC through the serial port for that extra layer of retro authenticity. However, the whole thing didn't last very long, due to life getting in the way and all that kind of poignant yet totally understandable stuff, and Champ Programming shut down in 1998. While two of their games were almost finished but never released, Champ Burger Climb and Frogum, eight games were completed and released before they closed up shop. The aforementioned Kong, as well as Packum, Miss Packum, Galaxia, Centipedum, Asterox, Invaders, and Galagon. And yes, these silly names are presumably to avoid legal trouble, since by then they were a legit business working out of a bedroom, and not just a hobbyist programmer working out of a bedroom. Each of these games included literal interpretations of their respective coin-op counterparts, as well as the champ mode, which kept things exciting and also helped move the games out of the lazy clone territory. There's not a whole lot more to say, since these are all excellent and highly playable PC versions of the arcade classics we know and love, but I guess I'll think of some words anyway. You know, I'm so glad I had AOL back then, because, man, I found an incredible number of choice shareware picks that way. Jetpack, Crazy Gravity, Combat Tanks, Pizza Worm, Champ Kong, and on and on. And come to think of it, these Champ games in particular were my first exposure to several of these classics and really fueled my passion for arcade titles in the years to come. 
You know, by that point, arcades in the U.S. were all but dead, and other than a Battletoads machine at my local skating rink, there wasn't much chance for a kid like me to play them. And I sure wasn't going to go out and pay for Microsoft Arcade. Frick, I'd just go over to Office Depot and play it on the store computers there. So unless I came across a free version, then those games may as well not have existed to me. And while these were rarely 100% faithful in terms of sound, graphics, or really anything, they clearly spoke the language of timeless gameplay. Not only that, but these champ games were just so good that they really inspired me to look further into the world of gaming beyond my computer screen. I thought, hey, what other arcade games are out there that I haven't played? I bet there's dozens of them. Then I got MAME several years later and my face melted into my keyboard, but that's another story for another day. So yeah, Champ Programming was a mark of utter quality circa 1997, and the fact that you could just download all of them for free and get amazing arcade quality gameplay at home? Well, that was just way too cool for me, even if I wasn't the one who was searching these out to begin with. Of course, stuff like this is completely outdated and obsolete now that we have near chip-for-chip -chip accuracy and emulation of arcade games, and there have been more HD remixed Ultra Mega Collection plus compilation treasury packs than you can count. But to me, the Champ series of arcade games for DOS are special and deserve to be remembered. After all, without them, maybe I wouldn't have as much of an interest in coin-op gaming as I do now, and that's a life that I don't want to know. And if you enjoyed this video on Champ Programming, then you might enjoy some of my others. I've covered quite a few arcade games, as well as more shareware stuff, and a lot of things for DOS, because DOS is amazing. So, if you would like to see more of them, then just look at my channel. There's a lot. You can also subscribe, and that'll give you more whenever they come out. And you can also do the social stuff if you're social. You know, Twitter, Facebook, even Google Plus if you're a weirdo, but I don't put a link there because that's a waste of everyone's time. And I've also got Patreon, which is a thing that lets you support LGR month to month, which is just awesome, so go check that out if you really like what you see here. And as always, thank you very much for watching.